Hi friends, welcome to another episode of Dr. Arya's Vlogs. In the previous lecture, we have discussed the history of dentures. Today, I am dealing with a separate chapter, Muscles of Mastication. Mastication, it is the mechanical grinding of food into smaller pieces by teeth. Complete denture should have proper balanced occlusion in order to enhance stability of the denture. And the masticatory muscles help in the mastication of food. According to Jeffrey P. Occasion, nothing is more fundamental to treating patients than knowing the anatomy. The masticatory system is a functional unit of the body, primarily responsible for chewing, speaking and swallowing. Its components also play a major role in tasting and breathing. The system is made up of bones, joints, ligaments, teeth and muscles. An intricate neurologic controlling system regulates and coordinates all these structural components. Coming to some of the definitions, according to GPT-9, mastication is defined as the process of chewing food for swallowing and digestion. Masticatory muscle is any of the muscle that elevate the mandible to close the mouth. That is temporalis muscle, superficial and deep masseter muscle, medial pterygoid muscle, otherwise known as elevator muscle or muscle of mastication. The elevator muscle is one of the muscles that on contracting, it elevates or closes the mandible. Coming to the muscles of mastication in detail, the four pair of muscles which form a group called muscles of mastication. They are masseter, temporalis, middle tergoid and lateral tergoid. First muscle is masseter muscle. It is a rectangular muscle which originates from the zygomatic arch and extends downward to the lateral aspect of the lower border of ramus of the mandible. And its insertion on the mandible extends from the region of second molar at the inferior border posteriorly, including the angle. It made up of two portions or heads, that is superficial and deep portion. Superficial portion, it consists of fibers that run downward and slightly backward. And the deep portion consists of fibers that run in predominantly vertical direction. And the function of masseter muscle is elevation of the mandible. When the masseter muscle contracts, it elevates the mandible or it closes the mouth. So next muscle is temporalis muscle. It is a large fan shaped muscle. It originates from the temporal fossa and the lateral surface of the skull. Its fibers come together extend downward between the zygomatic arch and the lateral surface of the skull to form a tendon. It inserts on the coronoid process and anterior border of ascending ramus. It is divided into three distinct areas, anterior, middle and posterior portion. The anterior portion, it consists of fibers directed almost vertically. In middle portion, the fibers running obliquely across lateral aspect of the skull and the posterior portion the fibers aligned almost horizontally coming forward above the ear to join other temporalis fibers as they pass under the zygomatic arch and the function is elevation of the mandible and the exact movement is indicated by the location of fibers or portion being activated. The next muscle is medial tergoid. It is also known as internal tergoid. It originates from the tergoid fossa and extends downward, backward and outward to insert along the medial surface of angle of the mandible. Along with the masseter muscle, it forms a muscular sling that supports the mandible at the angle of mandible. When the fibers contract, the mandible is elevated and the teeth are brought into contact. So the fibers, when fibers contract, the mandible is elevated and the teeth are brought into contact. 
and this muscle is also active in protruding the mandible. So unilateral contraction of the muscle will bring about a mediotrusive movement of the mandible. So next muscle is the lateral tergoid muscle. It is also known as external tergoid and the two distinct portions are inferior and superior portions or the lateral tergoid is considered to be divided and identified as two distinct and different muscles and the functions are nearly opposite. So these muscles are described as inferior lateral tergoid muscle and superior lateral tergoid muscle. So the inferior lateral tergoid muscle it originates at the outer surface of the lateral tergoid plate and extends backward, upward and outward to insertion primarily on the neck of the condyle. And superior lateral tergoid muscle, it originates at the lower part of lateral surface of great wing of sphenoid and from the infratemporal crust. It inserted to the neck of the mandibular condyle and into the front margin of articular disc. So superior lateral tergoid muscle, it stabilizes the condyle and disc during mandible loading. In this picture, the function of inferior lateral tergoid shows it is the protruding of the mandible and it contributes to the lateral movements and mouth opening. So he, here when the condyle is in a normal relationship in the fossa, that is when the condyle is in normal relationship in the fossa, the attachments of the superior and inferior lateral tergoid muscles create a medial and the anterior pull of the condyle and the disc. Medial and anterior pull of the condyle and the disc. As the condyle moves anteriorly from the fossa, when the condyle moves anteriorly from the fossa, the pull becomes more medially directed. Although digastric is not generally considered a muscle of mastication, it does have an important influence on the function of mandible. It is the digastric muscle. It is divided into two portions of bellies posterior belly and anterior belly or otherwise known as posterior digastric muscle and anterior digastric muscle. Posterior belly, it originates from the mastoid notch just medial to the mastoid process. Its fibers run forward, downward and inward to the intermediate tendon attached to the hyoid bone. This is the hyoid bone and this is the intermediate tendon. So it inserts into the intermediate tendon attached to the hyoid bone. Anterior belly, it originates at the fossa on the lingual surface of the mandible. This is the anterior belly. So, the lingual surface of the mandible just above the lower border and close to the midline. And its fibers extend downward and backward to insert at the same intermediate tendon as does the posterior belly. So, it also insert at the same intermediate tendon as does the posterior belly. Its function is depression of the mandible. So it is a mandibular depressor. So the movement of head and neck is a result of finely coordinated efforts of many muscles. The muscles of mastication represent only part of this complex system. Coming to the nerve supply and blood supply, the muscles of mastication, masseter, temporalis, middle tergoid, and lateral tergoid is innervated by the trigeminal nerve. And the masseter is innervated by the masseteric branch of mandibular nerve of trigeminal nerve and its blood supply is by masseteric artery. Temporalis, deep temporal nerve from the mandibular branch of trigeminal nerve, blood supply from anterior, posterior and superficial temporal arteries. Medial tergoid innervated by mandibular branch of trigeminal nerve, its blood supply by Tergoid branch of maxillary artery. Lateral tergoid, it is innervated by tergoid branch of trigeminal nerve and the blood supply by tergoid branch of maxillary artery. And the anterior digastric, the innervation by mandibular branch of trigeminal nerve and the mylohyoid nerve and the blood supply is from submental artery. And the posterior digastric, the innervation is by digastric branch of facial nerve and the blood supply is from Lingual artery and facial artery. 
This is the summary of anatomy features of muscles of mastication. In this lecture, we have learned muscles of mastication in detail. Thanks for watching. Stay home, stay safe.